So good morning, <laughs> good morning. Uh, so today's philosophy is your Ma Kuru Dhana Jana Jovana Garbam Harati Nimasata Kala Sarvam. What is the meaning of this? Do not be proud of your well, valor, and your feminist and other things. Because time is such powerful that can it vanish fast away everything in moments. Kya matla? मतलब यही है आप बहुत सुस्त रहते हैं हम बहुत बलवान हैं हमारे पास बहुत धन है पैसा है लेकिन एक अगर भूमिकम को आ गया और आठ को एक तो इसको एक मिनट में उसको सफा कर देते हैं सो इसमें इसलिए लिखा है माँ करो डू नॉट डू धना जाना जो बना कर गम हर अति निवेश अथकाल असर गम ठीक है अजीब तो बेस क्वेश्चन so it can be washed out in any moments by time. Thik hai sir? So this is today's lesson. Today we are going to talk on flexor neck femur. As you know, one of the terminology of flexor neck femur is, is called unsold flexor. Still, even there is so much phenomenal improvement in the medical science. The technology, better understanding of the biomechanics. Even today also, it is valid that it is a unsolved fracture, particularly in case of young age. Why so? We'll talk. But for the elderly, the things are a bit clear that we do replacement. It usually gives a predictable result, predictable outcome with replacement surgery. But unlike in case of young adults, still the difficulty is to assist the union and 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 return can bring him back to the previous when the pre injury status still a matter of challenge so there is so much improvement technology is improving better understanding is there this whole problem is yet not so why so because it is seen that even doing better surgery also you may you may have a good union but finally it may end up with a vascular necrosis of the and it is not less than 50 percent young on the other hand it out of this young person around 15 percent again goes for non-union so with this situation this situation was much bad earlier worse because this is now coming down to 50 percent but it was higher in other, other day, earlier days the revision of surgery is needed to go for replacement of surgery subsequently. It is happening. So that is why, that is why, that is why uh, it is yet to be, uh, yet to find out the solutions by which we can achieve good results. Yes. So why it is happening so, Margaret? Why it is happening so in fracture neck femur? No that we have already discussed discussed about the status of the neck here some existing anatomical things which usually are preventing factors which place important factor in union are there the lack of the number one is the, uh, the blood circulation this blood circulation to the neck and head part is very precarious, very precarious, very precarious and uh, that is why uh, there is the extra capsular ring which is contributing to this and most of the vessels are intraosseous in nature while it is coming to the neck. So fracture of this region invariably causes injury. That is one point. Number two is that the divide of actual periosteum. You do have a layer, what is called your retina film, which is lacking with the characteristic of osteoplastic activity. So that is why another minus point for union. Another thing is that this is an intracapsular region. Synovial fluid is every time washing it. So anything which is being laid down for osteoplastic activity, again synovial fluid is washing it. 
this just like a construction of a building where water is pouring on the cement floor. So every time this cementing work is done, water is pouring into washing the way. So this is the happening here. Besides, other factors like the fracture line is important. We we'll talk about this at the pulse. The why the fracture line is towards the more vertical plane rather than that of the horizontal plane. The chances of non-union and other problems mounts up. Osteoporosis, another factor. Combination of this part is another factor. We will talk about this again. What is this combination factors? Particularly posterior aspect and the intro aspect. Besides generalized conditions and other things are always there. These are but in putting into the vector neck femur, these are important points you have to remember that which actually is coming on the way of your union. Union. Yes? So anatomical point and other fracture configurations, you must understand why this problem is there. Not able to so that is why that is why it is important that is why it is important then uh, again another point is that the fracture where it is happening if it is towards the more towards the approximation the head many subcapitated nature then the chances of avascularity and non-unions are always high. Whereas, if it is towards the basal side, the chances of union is always high. Union is high. More towards the head part, the chances of non-union is high. It is all because of the fact that these vessels are more intraosseous while it is going towards the head. So, these are the other factors which also plays their role. The fracture line, the combination, the fracture level, all are contributing to the union of your, preventing in union of the fracture neck femur. Little bit of some morphological here that you know the neck shaft angle is almost 130, 35, sometimes plus minus 5. It is called CCD, caput column diaphysial, caput column diaphysial, it is just caput column diaphysial angle. On the other hand, the antiversion is also, you all know, that this is, why you are lying like this, so this is the area which is lying high, so this angle is around 10 to 15 degrees, you know, this part is clear, caput column Diaphysial angle and also the antiversion. These things are important because while you try to assist the reductions, this to be maintained. After reduction, this to be maintained. And this is also important of X-ray and other investigations we will talk. So these are the points in context to the union of the fraction and femur. Now let us talk a little bit of the classification. The classification is important, but none of the classification satisfy everything. But even then from anatomical point of view, if the fracture is taking place just below the level of head, we name it as a subcapital fracture. Subcapital, below the caput. Another fracture line is going through the neck. You call it trans-cervical. And while here it is coming towards the base side, you see this is cervical. So, uh, in your point of view also, this is important that the chances of union, this area is more than this area. This is one classification from anatomical point of view. Another classification we all know is called gardens classification. There are four types. One, there is incomplete fracture, type 1, where you do not find the clean cut fracture line. This is one you can say the valgus infected fracture. Even patient can able to work on it sometimes. 
patient can able to work on it. Yes. So this is because you can also you it is very difficult to delineate sometime with the X-ray, but you have to look at the trabecular line. Trabecular line, the angulation of which speaks about the injury. In type two, there is complete fracture, but there is no displacement. There is complete fracture, but there is no displacement. In type 3, there is complete fracture, but there is partial displacement. Partially it is displaced. Then part of the ECS still contact, another is displaced. And type 4, there is complete fracture and complete displacement. Then fragment will be going, this fragment going anteriorly, this fragment going posteriorly. So in AP view, sometimes it becomes difficult to differentiate between type 2 and type 4. Why? Because this fragment going anteriorly, this fragment posteriorly, they are in alignment now. If you take the X-ray from the front, it will overlap each other and it speaks around there is type 2 type of fracture. Unless you take a lateral view, well, it will delineate about the fragment displacements. So sometimes it's been confusing to differentiate between type 2 and type 4 if you are only doing the AP view. Yes, okay? Then another classification you know from the fracture line. This is false classification. What is more important in false classification nowadays? It is said that the false classification is much better to understand and also speaks about this about the outcome of the aim. What is the understanding meaning of this? The fracture line, if it is towards the more vertical line, the shearing force is more. That means supposing a fracture line is lying like this, which is very vertical. So it is a compressive the force. One is body weight, another is your limb or weight. So they it will act as a shearing force here. But if the fracture line is towards the more horizontal plane, the same shearing force will be converted to a compacting force. You got my point? So same thing, see, see what see if it is like this. So this will share, share. But if the fracture line is towards a more horizontal plane, the same force will be acting as a compacting force. So this is better to understand the why it is important. So that is why it has been categorized. 0, 30 degree, 30 to 50 degree, uh, 50 to 70 degree onwards. Meaning is that more you come towards the vertical line, more the sun sort of shading force, more you come towards the horizontal line. You better better outcome. Better outcome. This is most important, and it is also it speaks about this Hausa outcome also. So necessarily, the vertical line if this more towards vertical line, the senses of union and also non-union, your non-union will be high. But in case of horizontal line, the union that is high. Union is high. Vertical line, non-union is high. Okay, sir? That part should be clear. Then, um, um, beside this also, one should also understand that it is not only the fractures here, but the quality of the fracture, one, number two, quality of the bones are also equally important. What is the meaning of this? Meaning of this, the earlier days, most of the classifications were based on the fact of a X-ray. Nowadays, with the inventions of your CT scan, it is seen that posterior part and the inferior part it goes for more combination. More the rate of your combination, more the chance of a non-union and problems will be there. Are you getting my point? So nowadays, that is why pre-operative CT scan is important. Pre-operative CT scan is important to, for better understanding of these factors. X-ray is there, okay, fine. But CT scan is also equally important. Why it is important? I told you that around 95% of the cases, it is seen that there is combination of the posterior part, one. And out of this again, 
combination in combination pigment then almost 85 percent of the cases have the inferior part combination so the posterior part and the inferior part combinations is another bad thing for you more the combinations more the your chance of your non renal problems in the are getting my point so that is why nowadays it is also important to look for the combinations of the fractures and fracture morphology before before embarking upon some treatment protocol and also the quality of bone equally important particularly of osteoporosis and it is questions mainly comes in young uh, adult patient elderly patients question is different because elderly patient irrespective of the quality of bone and things we tend to go for a replacement but in case of adult we tend to preserve it yes or no we are a, 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 a main aim in case of adulthood that you try to preserve the head but this thing also matters to come to diet, the, 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 the treatment protocol whether i supposed to go for replacement even in young adult why why this question is coming this question is coming this unpredictability of the results it is seen with the osteoporotic young adult osteoporotic adult i said again osteoporotic but adult is adult but he supposed to go for preservation of the head but if there is osteoporotic adult is having combination of the fracture posteriorly if there is combination in purely and if his bone quality is very osteoporotic internal fixations many a times is going to fail and probably with the predictable good results replacements is good alternative so see the replacement questions is also not only dependent on the age but is also you have to calculate this all these things to be considered even in younger person also should i go for replacement or should i not because you know the replacements many times is results are predictable details are predictable but this is not predictable in case of your internal fixation internal fixation so it is not predictable for internal fixation so that is why one should understand to the importance of going for ct scan before operation or taking a decision for the operation yes sir so what pathology you know even in your um, uh, for 70 60 year but in 70 uh, sorry 50 years should be done but if the bone quality is very poor if there is gross combination of the fragment it is gross combination of the inferior cortex probably it is prudent to go for the replacement rather than your reconstruction so that is also the important point to be considered it's not only that uh, you depend on the age of the patients but also it depends upon the age. so this part is clear then uh, what is the mechanism of fracture here mechanism of fracture is that many a times uh, where is your stabulum mechanism of fracture is there that many a times this is first external rotation there are two types of mostly injury is happening is yes, a valgus abduction one is your abduction force and another is external rotation force what is the meaning see in a situation like this many you know yeah, the, the fractures are most common in the bimodal in the younger patients it is a bit common and in the elderly most of the time the younger patients usually have this fracture because of violent trauma but elderly it is because of trivial fall trivial fall and it is because of the osteoporosis right so in that here in case of adult young what is happening there you may have two mechanism one a valgus impact but most of the time it is going abduction forceful abduction abduction so that leads to a valgus impaction and type one fracture some mostly the valgus impacted fractures on the other hand it can't reveal for a fracture but most of the time it goes for external rotation 
This external vessel is causing hinging of this posterior neck, that of your posterior acetabulum, and that goes through the flexion. If it is happening like this. So most of the time, these are the two mechanisms by which the flexor neck get fractured, flexor neck get fractured. Abduction one, another is your postural external patients that is coming into contact with the posterior deep of the acetabulum and this usually goes for your combination. This area goes for your combinations. So these are the two mechanisms most of the time fracture is happening in case of fracture uh, in name. Okay, sir? Abduction. So this is this fracture which is happening most of the time this is impacted in nature. That is why it is not easily delineated in the X-ray. And many a times this patient may come to you even working with mild pain, infection, but subsequently it gets the displacement later. So this part should be clear to you. Then uh, next point is that what is the clinical fissures? What is the clinical fissures? Clinical fissures. That the patients usually come with the history of trauma. They are unable to work. Sometimes, as I said, he can work little bit of pain because of infection in the type 1 gardens. Yes, on the other hand, most of the time, you will find the patients used to have certain degree of external rotations. But it is true, the degree of external rotation is less in case of fracture neck femur than that of your extracapsular fracture neck. Secondary fracture. And the number two is that the little bit of shortening is there. The shortening, as you know, in external uh, in extracapsular fracture neck tumor, it is high. Great shortening in external vessel is the hormone. On the other hand, here also you get shortening, but it's less. Usually, it is said on an average, 18 millimeter shortening is seen on an average. On an average, 18 millimeter shortening is seen. And around 44 degree of external rotations is on an average case seen. On an average, these are the two things happening in clinical features. Now, while the patient is coming to you in the casualty, you go for the X-ray. Yes or no? For confirmation. Clinically, there may be tenderness in the anterior joint line. Clinically, there will be tenderness in the anterior joint line. Compression test will be positive, pain will be there. Yes or no, tenderness will be there. And you need to go for the X-ray to confirm it. AP view of pelvis and also the femur should be important. It is seen around 2 to 10 percent of the cases of fracture neck femur may associatedly have fracture cell femur. Yes, this is not that no, 2 to 10 percent cases. So it is always important and also a significant member may come to you with a associated injury to the pelvis as well. So that is why it is always mandatory to include the pelvis and also femur to exclude associated injury along with the neck. This is important for you. Yes or no? That is why they accept. Number two, lateral view is also important to know the neck. You take the parallel to neck and the cross table view also people used to say for lateral view. What about the lateral view? This also speaks about the displacement of the fragment also the margins of the neck. But what is important that <coughs> to know better the neck part, you need to do some maneuver here. What is that maneuver? We used to say you do internal rotation and traction. So if you do internal rotation, what is happening there? To know in X-ray about the status of the neck. So what, what is the important? See, normally the limb is like this, and the person and neck is like this. If the ray is coming from superior like this, so since there is an obliquity here because of this. And the person, so you cannot see the whole length of the neck. Yes, now what I am doing, the I am trying to do internal rotation, so making this part horizontal is parallel to the ray which is coming. So, as a result of which, you can see the whole length of the neck. 
Are you getting my point? So in APU like this, in endeavor date one, you cannot see the whole length of the name. To know it much better, one should do interpretations to make it horizontal so as to have a good picture of the name. That is why, and this actually also speaks about the factors configurations and better delineations of the name. How much name available with you? In a situation where you do not have sufficient amount of neck, absorption is there. In those situations, there is no point going for any reconstructions. Yes or no? So you do not have anything to repair. Yes or no? So even in a young person also, if you see that I do not have sufficient neck available with me, probably there is no point going for a reconstruction, even though he is a young person. Yes? So this is an important view to know about the availability of the neck with you so as to go for reconstruction and if there is no availability of neck there at all, there is no point of reconstruction, it is not possible to do so. This is a cementing work you are going to do reconstruction, if you do not have neck, you cannot go for reconstruction. That is the important thing to do. So understand the importance of taking the x in the internal rotation so as to delineate the neck part and to decide upon on which the future course of action. It's clear? So, and I already emphasized the importance of the CT scan particularly to know the morphology much better. The lineations about the combinations and also it is important sometimes uh, particularly in case of infected faction and femur where the X-ray is not very much distinguishable. Probably in this situation, CT scan speaks better to know the fracture line other things. Sometimes it's important and you need to decide uh, whom you know. The CT scan is nowadays becoming almost a regular research, regular part of the investigative armamentarium in fracture and femur. Okay? Then, uh, then, then uh, that is one. The, the diagnosis is being done. Now, what next? The initial period of treatment. The initial period of treatment is that what about the traction? There is a controversy about the point of traction, but better to understand a simple thing. If the traction can give better comfortability in other factors like femur, we give traction, we give traction also to the TB and other things. If it gives good performance there, why in fracture not femur? Yes, it is logical to give fracture neck femur traction. Forget about the controversy. What are the advantages? I tell you that one should even see fracture neck femur treatment is not an emergency, but it is true that earlier is better. Earlier is better, but you have to optimize the patient to make it fit for a person. That you are not going to take the patient hurriedly to the OT without going working out preoperatively. But it's always logical to do the optimization of the patients and take up the patients for persons with the, all the availability of the instrument other things with you. With you. Yes? That is a must. And uh, before that, in, be, in between, going for the operations and in between, should you go for traction? Yes, we should. And it is saying it is better to give skeletal traction. Why so? The skeletal traction should always see the fracture is there. The, at least the traction will do what? The alignment of the fragment. One point. Number two, is it also helps these vessels to be in the line. Thinking will be lost. And number three important point, it prevents further combination of the posterior fragment. What is the meaning? I am telling you. See, while the fracture is there, the fragment will do one fragment is like the angulation will be like this. Yes or no? Fragment. This is going for external rotation. If this limb is going for external rotation, then what is happening to the posterior cortex? It is hinging each other. Yes or no? Now, if you allow the patient to have this external rotation every time, every time it is hinging on the posterior cortex like this. Two fragments here. Are you getting my point? Fracture is here. You are allowing the patient to go for exaltation, then at the time it is hinging on it. More it is hinging, more it is causing damage. So there is a possibility of combination in the posterior fragment because of you are allowing the patients to go for exaltation. 
Is it clear to you all? So thereby, if you give an interaction, thereby you minimize the further deteriorations in the, in terms of your combination. Is it clear to you? So mechanically also you are assisting the person to further deterioration, prevent further deterioration of the effect combination. You do not want further combinations of attraction. So that is why it is always logical to go for traction in a situations in between before going into the for a person. So this is about attraction. Okay? So next point is that now optimization of the patient is being done. Now you go for the operation. Operation necessarily in case of young adult, the principle is to prevent uh, replay, uh, not go for replacement but do preservation of the head. Yes or no? So we'll try to preserve. Then it, uh, the treatment protocol is that you try to do close reduction, then then go for internal fixation. Close reduction and internal fixations is the is the is the actual principle of treatment in most of the cases. The close reduction is that patient is under anesthesia. Most of the time you do flexion, traction, extension, then do traction, extension, and interlation. So thereby most of the time you can reduce it. See flexion. Traction, extension. Disinfection is done. Disinfection between the fragment is done. Now we get traction. Do the extension. Do extension. Then interlation. Thereby you can do the alignment. And this should be confirmed in this CM also. How much you have achieved? Garden index is there to see how much you have achieved or not. In situations where you are unable to achieve the reductions. What is next? You necessarily go for open induction. Most of the time, it is Smith Peterson's approach, which is commonly being practiced to do open induction. So, if you are not happy with the reduction by the close maneuver, so necessarily you should endeavor for open induction. And most of the time, it is Smith Peterson approach, thereby, you try to do. Do I do open reductions? You do the open reductions and then also reduction. Then next time is the fixation. Fixation, as you know, we are more concerned about the multiple cancellous screw technique. Multiple cancellous screw technique. So whatever it might be, there are speed Peterson nail, long back, SP nail, trifinance nail was initially used. And that was one of the important step in internal fixation of the and femur. You must have not seen the trifling, eh? all book you will find the trifling pin is there, which you have to introduce inside. Eh? That is being done long back by Smith Peterson. This was Smith Peterson nail. Smith Peterson, SP nail. It's no more available here. Uh, but this is nowadays being replaced by cancellous screw. Now there are so many things in cancellous screw. One basic point you are supposed to understand, one there is a fracture here, if the screw is being passed over here, then the, uh, the threaded part should always cross the fracture side. This is one of the basic things you have to understand. Most of the time, the selections of the threaded part, usually cancellous screw come with 6.5, 16 and 32 thread length, yes or no? So, whether to go for the 16 or 32, it depends upon where the fracture is. But basic principle that your threaded part should cross the fracture side so as to have the, your leg effect. So as to have this leg effect. Understood? So this is an important thing in the basic principle, one point. Next point is that the selections of the configuration. Selection of the configuration, how you are changing the design. So, there are a concept of passing the screw in parallel, parallel to each other. It is said this configuration of the parallel fixation is not good. There is a problem here. What is the problem? I technically ten, can tell you that that if the screws are parallel, what is the benefit? If you are tightening all the screw, 
A time will come, it may go for Vedas. Why so? You know, there is a compact bone posteriorly in the day, posterior median, what is that called? Calcar. Calcar. So, calcar is the, in the posterior medial part of the neck, which is essence up towards the protection. Now, this is a strong bone. Now, if you are doing a tightening over the screws, what will happen? This part is supposed to go compress. Yes or no? But since this part is very strong, it will not allow you to go compression. So, instead that will hinge on it and it may go step. Thereby it goes for various phases. Are you getting my point? This is a very important technical thing so whether you should do more screwing here. So, more you tight, it's supposed to have a uniform compression at the flexor side. Instead of that, this calcar prevents some time to have its uniform compressions. Other part is osteopathy, this is not osteopathy. That will hinge on and it, if you are tightening it, there is a step and that will do your various deformity. So that is another thing. That is why there is always effort to change the configurations of these screws. What are the other configurations? Or we can cancel a screw. One concept is that it should go for the triangular fixation. It is said it is much better than that of your pair. Triangle, reverse triangle. Reverse triangle supporting anterior cortex, supporting posterior cortex, supporting inferior cortex. Okay? That is a concept better than that of your parallel. That should be clear. Then people used to also go for a screw from below the lesser tachyntha. Technically, it is difficult, one point. Number two is give better support to this gas. This is true because you are vertical in the line of your compressions. This is good. But minus point is that if you are doing a drilling over there, every possibility of subtrochanter is there. So this is also not very acceptable because you do encounter a lot of complications with this technique. What is next? Another concept is there that the two screws here, another screw if you can pass from here to this side. This shape is called pulse screw and it is very logical to say because in your oblique flexor like this, going like this, the flexor line is like this, but your screw is going like this. Actually, it is not adhering to the principle of left screw. A left screw is supposed to have perpendicular to this flexor line, yes or no? But if you additionally pass a screw from this side, probably it will act at the flexor side in perpendicular way and it will be better compression. That is my point. So this is a another configuration in, the, in your cancellous screw. So cancellous screw is a 6.5 cancellous screws are the main workforce, so to say, for flexion and femur. And configurations are changes. Parallel screw, triangular screw, entry from the subrocanting area, entry from this here. This are but additionally in this cancellous screw another thing can be done. What is that? As I say, most of the time you do have combinations in the inferior cortex. So if you do flexation here, if your inferior cortex is flexor, you do not have a good support to work. So there is sharing forces working more. Can you do something here? Yes. Concept is coming. This is called spider plate. Spider plate. Spider plate. This is spider plate is placed in the inferior cortex. Spider plate is being supported in the inferior cortex, thereby you are converting the shearing force to a compression force. Are you getting my Additionally, we, besides changing the configurations of placement of the cancellous screw, one can again think of doing additional thing there by giving a spine, spider plate at the inferior cortex to support the inferior cortex and then good conversions of the shearing force to compression force. Okay? So these are the basic principles where screw, but nowadays people are going for SS money sliding screw technique, sliding screw. It is said the sliding screw is far better than that of your cancellous screw and your additional de screw. Yes? 
then again people say coming with the short lock plate short lock plate at this area locking with fixed angle these are the various things available yes slide is screw done with the rotation screw dss is also being done here with sometimes support from the additional screw additional screw superiorly uh, for your um, derotation even somebody used to go for a fully threaded screw from behind inferiorly dss in middle derotation screw above another fully threaded screw from the inferior cortex here to give a support there inferiorly are you getting my point so so there are so many configurations here uh, the slide is screw Conversion with uh, slightly screw, the sister screw above, again another screw is down below, then your lock plates, short lock plates are also being used to give a fixation. Fixation. So, invention and modification and addition to your armament is going on and on. Starting from the days of the speed Patterson nail. To the various types of your, but it is true, even then we are unable to solve the problem. So many things are coming up, going, coming, and probably hundreds and hundreds of implants are coming, which is true today, but probably may not be true tomorrow. Something new is always coming. The technique is changing, screw is technique is changing. Even then, I have already said around 15% goes for non union, male union, 15% goes for avian. So the problem is still there. We are yet to have it zero. So this uh, is going on, but you are supposed to understand the basic thing. And the rethinking in this approach is also, as I said, on the basis of CT scan and the quality of bone is also important in today's scenario, so as to have a predictable results with the replacement. You know the replacements usually give a predictable outcome. Unlike in your internal fixations, many times we cannot predict the final outcome. Even though your surgery is excellent, everything is fine, it may fail. It may fail. Initially, it may pass. That's when there is union. But after two, three, three years, he may come with AV. Yes? Initially, you must have a good union. You can have. You can do everything fine. After three to four years, he will be coming to you with a fixer of AV here. So the problem is still going on. So it is that is why it is called armhole fracture. So this is all about your anatomy, classifications, the clinical features, the approach for investigations, and the treatment protocol. And up to complications, we have covered everything. Do you have anything to ask?